Hey there and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we will solve a complex SQL interview question. Let us go through the question and see what is the table given and what is the expected output. So the question is to write a SQL query to find all flights where at least two passengers have confirmed reservations in adjacent seats. Now adjacent seats are defined as having consecutive seat numbers. That is, for example, 12A, 12B can be considered as an adjacent seat. Now in the final result, we have to display the flight ID and the name of passengers with adjacent confirmed seats. So this is the question. So for that, we have created a table called seat reservations. Let us query the table and see the schema. Then let us go through the expected output and see how we can get the expected output. And then we will start writing query for the same. So here is the seat reservations table that we have already created. So it has reservation ID, then it has passenger name, seat number, booking date, flight ID and status. Here the booking date can be considered as the date for which that particular passenger has booked the flight. Now even before going through the solution, I suggest you post the video here, go through the question. The DDL and DML to create the table will be available in the description. Try solving this question on your own. If you can solve this, you are pretty good with SQL. And if you are not able to solve this, keep on learning. You will be able to solve this question or more complex question in near future. Now let us go through the expected output. So here is the expected output table which we have to finally obtain. And this is the exact same reservations table which we initially saw that we have already created. Now when we go through the final result, we can see that we require three columns. The first column is flight ID. The second column will be passenger one and the third column will be passenger 2 and here the passenger 1 and passenger 2 will be sitting in adjacent seats for the same flight and also it should be on the same date as well so that is another condition that we have to make sure when writing the query let us go through the first flight which is F101 so these are the records corresponding to flight 101 and there is one record for which the status is cancelled so this record is invalid so let us highlight this record now when we go through the other two records which are available for flight 101 we can see that the seat number is 12a and the other seat number is 12c and the booking date are also different now even though the status is confirmed we cannot say those two seats are adjacent seat or those two passengers are sitting adjacent even we can see that the passenger name is similar so it is not necessary that that should be the same passenger but from the other conditions itself it is pretty clear that 12a and 12c are not adjacent seats now let us go through two cases where passengers are sitting on adjacent seat for that we will take the example of f102 so when we go through the record of f102 we can see that the first seat id corresponding to alice brown is 14a and the booking date is 02-1-2024 now the second seat id will be 14b corresponding to bob johnson and the booking ID is also same, which is 0201-2024. And here the flight ID is also same, which is F102. So we can see that Alice and Bob are sitting on adjacent seat. So in the first record, we got the result corresponding to flight 102. Bob and Alice are sitting on adjacent seat. Now let us go through the third record corresponding to flight 102. On the same day, which is 0201-2024, the seat number is 14C. And the previous seat number was 14B and it was on the same day. So we can tell Bob and Sophia is also sitting on adjacent seat. Now in the result as well, we can see that we have record corresponding to flight 102. Sophia and Bob are sitting on adjacent seat. So similarly, we have to go through the entire table and identify all instances where passengers are sitting on adjacent seat and the status should be confirmed for a particular flight on a particular booking date so that is the requirement now let us go back to SSMS and see how we can get the output so we will start with select close and instead of star we will only take the required columns so the first column will be passenger name passenger name will be the first column and the second column will be seat number third column will be booking date and fourth column will be flight ID 
and finally we require a new column to be calculated based on a window function so that column will be calculated based on the row number window function that is row underscore number open and close parenthesis write an over close open and close parenthesis and inside the over close we have to specify the partition and order by so partition by partition will be based on flight id booking date so the first column will be flight id second column will be booking date and now we have to write the order by close order by seat number in ascending order seat number in ascending order so let us give the column a name as flag one flag underscore one so this will be the column name now let us execute this and see our result so in the result we have passenger name seat number booking date flight id and a flag which is created based on the partition flight id booking date and order seat number so this is the first query now we will place the first query that we completed inside a cte so we will give the cte name as cte1 so with cte1 as open and close parenthesis and here we have the first query within the cte1 now we will write a second query on the same table which is seat reservations table select we require the same columns let us copy the column names copy paste it here now we will write the same row number window function once again we will copy this and we will give the column name flag 2 so that will be the new column name and this is taken from the same table seat reservations but here we are making a slight change that is let us write the from close and then let us add the filtering condition here so where status should be equal to confirmed so status equal confirmed so that will be the condition that we have to add here now based on the condition another column will be created which is the flag to column based on the row number window function so that is the second part of the query let us execute and we will be getting a result where we have a flag to column created on the same reservations table but there is an additional condition which is status equal to confirmed that is the condition so we will place the second part of the query in a second cte that is cte2 as open and close parenthesis and the entire query will be inside a cte which is cte2 now we have to create a tricky join between cte1 and cte2 so that we get the required output so we will start with select now from the first table will be cte1 and we will give the alias name as 1 cts1 now we are going to create an inner join inner join with cte2 and let us give the alias name as 2 and now we are going to write the joining condition on and the joining condition should be based on booking date flight id and passenger name so that will be the first condition that we have to write here so one dot booking date equal two dot booking date that will be the first condition now let us write the second condition which is one dot flight id equal two dot flight id that will be the second condition and now we will write another condition which is the third condition based on passenger name that is one dot passenger name not equal to two dot passenger name so that will be the third condition now before going to the next part of the query we will have to write a star so that we can get all the columns from the two ct which is ct1 and ct2 now execute and we will be getting a result where we have all columns from common table expression 1 and common table expression 2 now we have to add two more conditions in the where clause so that will be like where the status 
from the first table that is CTA1 table should be confirmed. Here we have all the records because when we go back to CTA1, we did not filter it based on status confirmed. Hence, we have all records. Even when status is cancelled, we are getting that record in the final table. So that we don't want here. So that condition we will be adding here. So status should be equal to confirmed so that is the first condition and also we have to provide the alias name one dot status so we are taking it from the cte one now even before executing this there is one more thing that we have to make sure we have to come back to the cte one and see if we have that particular column defined in the first cte when we go through the table we can see that we don't have that particular column defined so we will add that column first in the cte status so we have added that particular column now execute this and we will be getting the particular result execute and we have result where status is confirmed from both the tables now we have the result based on the join condition that we have created which is based on booking date should be same flight id should be same and passenger name should not be same so that is the condition that we have added now there is one more joining condition or filtering condition either we can add that particular condition as a joining condition or a filter condition here we will consider that is a filter condition within the where clause that is there is a relation between flag one column and flag two column so the difference between flag one column and flag two column should be one so then we can tell that those two seats are adjacent seat so if we go through the first record that is corresponding to bob johnson seat is 14b booking date is 2024-012 and coming to the second table here we have alice brown Seat number is 14A, which should be adjacent to 14B, and it is on the same date. And the flight ID is also similar, but we can see that flag 2 is 1 and flag 1 is 2. So the difference will be 1. And coming to the second record corresponding to Sophia Ali, the seat number is 14C, and the booking date is 2024-0102. Flight ID is F102, and flag is 3 corresponding to the first flag. And here we have the passenger Alice Brown, but the seat ID will be 14A and flag will be 1. The difference between flag 1 and flag 2 is not equal to 1. So we can tell that those two seats are not adjacent seat. So that condition we have to add here and we will get the result. So and open and close parenthesis and inside this we will specify the condition that is flag 1 minus flag 2 should be equal to 1 then we can tell that those two seats are adjacent also we don't want all the columns from the particular table we only require few column that is passenger 1 passenger 2 and flight id so we will take one dot flight id which is taken from the first cte we can take it from second cte as well either way it will give us the same result now we have to take the first passenger which is one dot passenger name and this will be the passenger one passenger one and similarly we have to get the passenger name from the second CT that is two dot passenger name and the column name will be passenger two now execute and we should be getting the result that we saw initially execute and we have a result where we have flight ID passenger 1 and passenger 2 and all the conditions are satisfied here that is the two passengers are sitting adjacent to each other they are traveling on the same date and they are traveling on the same flight so this is the required output that we have obtained and now let us go back to the excel where we have the expected output and compare the result that we have obtained with the expected output copy pasting it here now compare the result now we can see that we have the same result which we were supposed to obtain so this is one method of solving this query you can try solving this question and if you have better methods or interesting approaches please comment the method so it will be helpful for others as well hope you like this video thanks for watching and subscribe for more such content thank you